Could you possibly be the jerk for telling your 20-year-old son that he needs to respect his mother? We'll get to that in a bit, but first, am I the jerk for moving out of the apartment my parents bought for me after they made me let my brother live there? They didn't buy it specifically for me, I just didn't know how to phrase it better. When I got into university, my parents purchased an apartment close to the campus so I could live my way without having to deal with other people. I'm not social and I could best be described as either a misanthropist or curmudgeonly. It was great for two years and I came out of my shell a little. I met other people like me and discovered that, unlike high school, university isn't heck. I even met a guy. We both work at the campus store. My little brother graduated last year and got into the same school. Rather than stay in dorms, he convinced my parents to let him move in with me. Well, they own it, so I had no say. I lasted one semester. Since he had an off-campus residence, my apartment became party central. I asked my parents to make him stop. After talking to him didn't work, they said to loosen up. I think they know how to change my personality. I talked to the university and was able to snag a rare single room in the mature student dorm. I don't have a lot of stuff, so when we went home for Christmas, I took what was really important to me. My boyfriend, first one ever by the way, look at me all social now, cleaned out my room and moved my stuff to the student housing for me. When we drove back after New Year's, I dropped off my brother and then went to my new place. It isn't perfect, but it is pretty sweet. My parents called me and asked where I was. My brother had let them know I wasn't in the apartment. I told them where I was and why I was there. They were upset that they spent all that money to help me and I didn't appreciate it. I said I did, until they stuck me with my brother. Without me there, he's having a blast. Good for him. He's also missing a lot of classes and has been fined for noise complaints by the condo board. But that's not my problem. My parents are asking me to please move back in because my brother is in danger of being put on academic probation. I asked if I was allowed to bar him from having parties and stuff. He was a part of the conversation and was upset that I was asking to be put in charge of him. My parents said that he was allowed some freedom and that as his big sister I should look out for him and not let him fail. I thanked them for the opportunity, but declined. And he recently had a party that the cops had to shut down. My parents are considering selling the apartment, but it's kind of a crappy market right now, I guess. I feel bad that they might lose money after doing something so awesome for me. And I feel bad that my idiot brother might have to take time off school to calm down, but I don't think I'm the jerk. They all do though. It's hilarious how they're actually expecting OP to be in charge of their brother. But their brother doesn't want OP to be in charge. They still want OP to let their brother do whatever they can. They literally can't even make up their mind and paint a clear picture as to what they want. Needless to say, I think it's more than understandable why OP moved out and they shouldn't be shamed for doing so. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you enjoy getting to decide whether or not all of these people are jerks, why not hit that subscribe button down below? That said, our next story is... Am I the jerk for not asking my child to give up her room? My fiance and I are moving in together. We decided that she should be the one to move in with us since my home is bigger and in a better area. I have a 14 year old daughter and she has two daughters who are 14 and 16. I live in a two bedroom home. A few years ago, I finished the basement and added a bathroom to it and gave it to my daughter. The other room is my office that I was planning to turn into a bedroom for my fiance's daughters. It's a small room, but it's nice and it can fit two beds, especially if we had a bunk bed instead of two twin beds. And it doesn't have a bathroom, but we don't live in a palace, so it's not that far away from the bathroom. My fiancé and I have been talking about the room situation, and we don't seem to be able to agree on anything. She thinks I'm a jerk for planning to let my daughter have the entire basement for herself and force hers to share a small room. I think this has been my daughter's room for years. She decorated it with her mom, and therefore she shouldn't have to give it up. Obviously, her family's on her side and my family's on my side, so we want other opinions as well. Honestly, I don't think there's any great solution here no matter which way you want to go with it. If you force the daughter to give up her room, she's going to be resentful probably forever. If you force the girls to live in that small bedroom in a cramped house, they'll probably be pretty upset. If you give up your master bedroom and move into the small room yourself with your partner, you'll probably be upset. Is there a clear choice here? Our next story is, am I the jerk for telling my fiance that my friend's trauma is more important than her comfort? My best friend lost a parent a year and a half ago, which led him to a mental health crisis. 
Our friend group has been picking up the pieces ever since. He's doing much better now that he's in therapy, but he's definitely gone through it. What has complicated matters worse is my fiance. It goes without saying that I love her, but she is the definition of a busybody sometimes. My best friend is a very private person. She knows something happened with him, but she doesn't know the details of what that something is. She probably never will, but because she's around me and my friends often, as my fiancé and I live in the same house, she hears bits and pieces of the story and presses for more information. I try to circumvent this as best as I can. For example, I step out of the room for specific phone conversations, but still, it's hard to limit the discussion about it sometimes. If it's necessary, we bring it up and she's around in person. We'll refer to it as the Nolan situation without giving specifics. Nolan will also stop by my place at night when he can't sleep. This doesn't happen all that often, maybe twice a month. He'll text me or call me saying he's outside. I'll go sit with him and maybe smoke a little bit, then he'll head home. I'll wait up until I know he got home safely and then I go back to sleep. My fiance hates this. She claims the phone calls always wake her up. They don't. She just sometimes happens to wake up for the bathroom while I'm outside, and that me not being in bed is alarming. This brings us to last night. Nolan stopped by and when I came back inside, my fiance said she was putting a stop to it. She said all the sneaking around is making her paranoid. She doesn't feel like she can properly trust me or be a part of my friend group without knowing the details, and that Nolan needs to stop relying on me so much. I told her that no matter whether we're married, dating, whatever, she will never have any ownership over my friend's trauma and that she's never going to be able to order me around in regards to it. I also said her comfort was less important than someone's actual physical well-being. She was obviously hurt by this and went to stay with her mom after work today. Am I the jerk? Definitely not the jerk. I mean, just imagine he shows up and everybody's code talking. People are visibly trying to avoid you with phone calls, secretly meeting up. Absolutely not. Our next story is, am I the jerk for having no empathy toward my overly emotional wife by not picking her up? I'm 26 year old male, wife is 23 year old female, and we've been together three years if relevant. Lately my wife's been emotional, like every little thing sets her off. There wasn't a banana? She cries. No sugar? She cries. Missed her bus? She cries. I'd almost think she was pregnant, but we discovered after a year of trying to conceive that she's infertile. This was two months ago. She also recently had a baby start at her nursery, which also sets her off, so it's been a tough time. I've tried to be empathetic, but it's all the time tears. I'm so tired. Like each time she cries, I'll drop what I'm doing to comfort her even if she calls me at work. She walks an hour to work after a bus journey. She leaves at 6.30 to get at work at 9.30, that's how long the travel is. I told her I'd drive her, she didn't want me to. I told her to take an umbrella and she forgot. She called me sobbing because it rained like I said it would. She asked me to pick her up and I said I couldn't because I had a meeting. She said I'm sure they'll understand and truthfully they have been understanding. But it's all the time and I did warn her. I refused. She did get huffy and when we got home that night she wasn't crying, shocker, but was mad and hasn't spoken to me since. But we haven't seen each other much as she gets home late and still has work to do, coursework, etc. I asked a friend who insisted I'm the jerk. But my wife texted me to say she's considering taking driving lessons in June, which I thought was a win. But she's apparently still angry. Am I the jerk? I mean, has OP communicated and tried to understand why she's feeling so touchy? Does she have a condition? Should she be in some kind of therapy? I guess OP clarified in a comment that she refuses to go to therapy? Although it doesn't have to be therapy, I mean, it could even be like a thyroid issue that's causing mood swings. Either way, I don't think OP did anything too heinous here. Our next story is, am I the jerk for telling my dad I won't go anywhere with him if his wife is there? My 38-year-old female parents got divorced about 14 years ago after my father had been having an affair with his current wife Brenda for 5 years. Not only this, but he was absolutely horrible to my mom in the process and really screwed her over. I was angry with him and went no contact with him for 4 years after. My grandfather on my dad's side before he passed away told me to try and make amends with my father. As I loved him very much, I agreed to try. 
I slowly tried to build a relationship back with him and things have been okay but strained because trusting him has been hard. I also don't like Brenda. I did try but we have nothing in common. She's a very gossipy person who talks trash about so many people and I'm more interested in world events and science and psychology. I lived nearby until about three years ago and made an effort to see them once a month. I've now moved a four hour drive away and can only get up once or twice a year to visit. On one visit a couple years back, Brenda started talking about my half sister, saying if she had raised her, she wouldn't have all the problems she did and that my mom was wrong in how she managed her mental illness. Without going into as much detail, my sister has bipolar disorder and was very hard to manage in her childhood. And after years of trying to get her help and her running away, my mom agreed to let her go live with other family as she asked. It was either that or she was going to live in a group home most likely. I snapped at Brenda saying she wasn't there and she has no idea what she was talking about. I was little but I remember all the pain my family was going through and how hard it was for mom to let her go. Since then, every time we've gone out together, Brenda refused to talk to me. She won't respond if I say hello. She stares at her phone and talks to my dad as if I'm not there. I asked him to say something about it because it's rude and uncomfortable and he just says he can't tell her what to do and we need to work it out. I told him if that's the case, I will only visit with him and not if she's around. He says I'm being dramatic and if Brenda isn't invited, he won't come either. I told him if he won't leave her behind, then he won't be seeing me anymore either. I love him, but I'm not going to let her disrespect me anymore. He's making me feel like I'm being the jerk because I want to see him, but I don't want to let her treat me this way. Definitely not the jerk. OP should just stand their ground and be insistent that you love and want to see your father, but you cannot continue to be disrespected by this person. End of story. Our next story is, am I the jerk for making my brother's vegan girlfriend feel alienated at my engagement dinner? I, 24 year old female, recently got engaged and had an engagement party dinner this past weekend. I'm currently still receiving backlash from this and want to get some outside opinions if I was in the wrong. My fiance and I invited both of our immediate family and close friends to this dinner, about 30 people. The dinner was held at a nice Italian restaurant in my city. Our invites gave our guests the option to choose between a meat option and a fish option for their mains. It's important to note that the only people in both mine and my fiance's family that have, I guess, food restrictions are my dad and stepmom as their pescatarian. But a lot of people in our family love seafood, so the fish option was chosen more than the meat option. My younger brother, 20 year old male, contacted me about a week before the dinner to RSVP and ask if he can bring a plus one, his new girlfriend. He chose the meat option. Now, my brother dates around a lot and is always bringing new girls around, so I wasn't aware that he was even in a relationship. I told him sure and I'd have an extra seat for her. Night of the dinner comes. Everyone's having a good time. I met my brother's new girlfriend. She seemed very sweet. When it came time to eat, she pulled one of the waiters aside and loudly asked him, Is there any vegan options? The waiter looked confused and said, We have a fish and a meat option for the mains. I can offer you a salad and some roasted potatoes and other veggies as a substitute if you wish. Brother's girlfriend started getting mouthy with him and said, Well, what if I don't want a salad, huh? You just assume because I'm vegan I only eat salads? What if I want some pasta? What kind of restaurant is this? This is discrimination. My brother started trying to calm her down, but she started going off on me, saying how, why would you pick a restaurant that doesn't have vegan options? Many people are vegan nowadays. It makes me feel alienated that you couldn't even think to accommodate me. I explained to her that the only people that have food restrictions here are pescatarians. So that's what I considered when I chose the restaurant. I didn't even know she was coming until a week ago. The reservation had been booked a month ago. She started saying it's embarrassing on my part that I can't accommodate all my guests and called me small minded. I told her, sorry I didn't think to accommodate you. I'll consider that in the future. Hopefully you'll be around long enough for me to be able to do so. She ended up leaving. My brother walked out with her and has been messaging me saying that I should apologize to her because I embarrassed her in front of everyone. I told him she embarrassed herself. My mom's also been on my case to apologize, to be the bigger person and keep the peace. Am I the jerk for making her feel alienated? I definitely don't think this is OP's jerk. This was sprung on them last minute and the brother didn't even mention that she was vegan. 
She was the one that got all feisty and blew up and stuff. Opie doesn't have anything to apologize for. She just comes off as horribly spoiled. This next story is, am I the jerk for asking my stepdaughter to cook for us? My 45 year old male, stepdaughter, 17 year old female is a phenomenal cook. I'm talking homemade pasta sauces, scratch baking, heck sometimes imported seasonings, but she only does it for herself. She's been fine cooking when I ask her to do it for us, but only on rare occasions. When we're all busy and need to do DIY dinner nights and can't all sit around the table, you can smell her homemade garlic pesto or vegan teriyaki stir fry all over the house. And it gets irritating. We get her ingredients that she uses up quickly and never makes meals to share with and I'm getting annoyed. So I asked her earlier tonight if she would start making dinner for us all more frequently. I didn't say every night and she got annoyed and mouthy with me saying that she's drowning in schoolwork, her internship and her commissions, very talented digital artist, and can't babysit us because you never learn to cook. She claims her sparse dinner preparations are a treat when she's up to the task and feeling nice, and she can't be expected to come up with something new and fresh every night. She's doing it for herself anyway, why not for the rest of us? So I told her to just do the dishes and go to her room. She did the dishes and stomped off and hasn't come out since. And my wife thinks I'm the jerk here, but I think I'm in line. She lives under my roof and doesn't pay rent, and she's already cooking every night for herself anyway. Am I the jerk? So you're saying that the 17 year old minor lives under your roof. It's kind of how it's supposed to work, I think. Also said minor doesn't make dinner every night for you. I just don't think that's usually how it normally happens. And honestly, I understand where she's coming from. She wants to make one treat for herself. Obviously, Opie's going to great lengths to dance around the fact that making servings for more people, three, four, I don't know how many people, is definitely more time consuming and a lot more work than just one meal for one person. Our next story is, am I the jerk for grounding my daughter for leaving her sister with the neighbor? I'm the single mom of three kids, Polly, 16 year old female, Trevor, 12 year old male, and Cassie, eight year old female. I have little to no support. Their father left after Cassie was born, no family nearby, etc. I have two sitters that I can call on as needed and I use them before I ever ask Polly for help. I don't want her missing out on her teenage years. Before this incident, I only ever asked her to babysit once because I had no one else and I paid her $15 an hour, at the time above minimum wage. This past Saturday, Polly was due to hang out with some friends. For a couple of days, Trevor was ill but testing negative for COVID. That day, he spiked a very high fever and I had to take him to the ER. I asked Polly to watch Cassie as the sitters weren't responding. I apologized that she'd have to miss out on time with friends, but said I'd pay her and she could even have her friends over at our place. Polly pitched a fit and asked why I couldn't send Cassie to the neighbors. We don't know them. They moved in last month and outside of waving when we get our mail, I don't have a relationship with them. Polly was irritated. I told her I'd pay her $18 an hour and that I had to go. I take Trevor to the ER and we have to wait a bit. Polly kept asking if the sitters responded and they hadn't. Eventually, it was our time to be seen, so I told Polly I'd be out of reach for a bit. Turns out Trevor had a bad case of RSV and, due to pre-existing health problems, had to be admitted for the night. I was terrified. When I called Polly to update her, I heard people talking in the background and said, oh, you had your friends come over. She told me no. She dropped Cassie at the neighbors and went out. I was furious. I told her to go home and get her sister. I then asked for the neighbor's number. She didn't even ask for it, which I get teenager logic and all, but still. First, Polly refused until I told her she was grounded. I made her FaceTime me when she got home to show that Cassie was with her. Eventually, my mom was able to make the two hour drive down to stay with the girls, but I told her not to let Polly leave the house. The next day, Trevor and I were able to go home. I lectured Polly about what she did and grounded her for two weeks. She got mad at me and said that I can't expect her to drop her plans. I point out I never do, but this was an emergency and her brother was sick. She told me that's not her problem. She's also mad because I won't pay her. I apologized profusely to the neighbor who said it was okay and that he would have called me, but Polly didn't leave my number either. Polly said I overreacted. Am I the jerk? 
definitely not an overreaction because you don't know these people. That's an eight year old you just left with people you don't even know. You haven't as much as just waved at them. And not only that, but there was no form of contact with the outside world with people who matter connected to that eight year old. I can't believe Polly didn't at least give her number. Our next story is, am I the jerk for telling my friend she's losing friends because her world revolves around her kid? So I, 20 year old female, have a friend, let's call her Anne, 23 year old female, who got pregnant from a one night stand. The father didn't want to do anything with the child, so she's a single mother. Her daughter Kate, 2 years old, is really cute. I love babysitting her, but she's all Anne cares about now. For example, she often cancels meetings with friends because of her. I understand that sometimes things come up, but this happens often and she gives reasons like, Kate is really clingy today, or Kate really wants to go to the zoo, and even if she is there, her daughter is all she can talk about. She shows us a bunch of pictures, talks about her sleeping, her eating habits, her diaper content, her favorite songs, everything. And while I would be interested in them, if you don't stop her, she can literally talk about this for hours. And even if I try to change subjects, the topic of Kate comes up again and again. A week ago, we had a two hour long coffee meet and when I asked a server for some water, she said, Kate want Kate to drink more water. And then for the rest of the meet was about how she wants to teach Kate to drink more water. Yesterday I babysat Kate and I stayed there after Ann put her to sleep. We started talking and the topic of being a single mother came up shortly. She told me how hard it is to parent alone and how distant she feels from her peers. I try to be empathetic because I understand that being a young single parent is always challenging. But then she said how people show their true colors and listed a few of our friends who have been distant with her. She called them fake friends and witches which I didn't like. I told her most of those friends wanted to be child free and that maybe talking about Kate made them uncomfortable. She dismissed it and said that if they were true friends, they would love her kid as much as her. I told her that she's having unrealistic expectations, and that just because her world revolves around Kate, it doesn't mean that everybody's does too. She got really upset and accused me of shaming her for being a single mother. I said I'm just trying to point out that not everybody cares as much about Kate as her, and her constantly talking about her kid can be tiring. She got angry and told me to leave, so I did. Today I woke up with angry messages from our friends saying that Anne is a struggling mom and I should have shown her support. I feel bad about how I phrased it, but I don't think I was being a jerk here. I do understand that Kate is a very big part of her life and that she wants to talk about her, but I think there's a healthy limit to that. I'm closer to Kate than most of our friends, some of them never met her. So it's like hearing about a stranger's every little habit all the time. But tell me, am I the jerk? Obviously I know the two are not even close to being comparable between a baby and a dog, but let's just say for the sake of examples, you have a friend who's been your friend for a long time and all of a sudden they get a dog and you go and you hang out with them and all they can talk about all the time is their dog and the funny things they do when they go on a walk and how they sleep upside down and like to lay with you and the kind of chew toys they like, how they have an undying need to stare at you while they're taking a poo, and that's all they talk about all the time. You would see how it gets really old and you kind of have less interest in hanging out with them and you might get a little distant if that's just all they're going on about. And when you try to change the subject, it eventually finds its way back to, man, it's so hard being a dog owner and having to take care of the dog and blah, blah, blah. This next story is, am I the jerk for buying an apartment for my sister-in-law to live in and making a profit? My sister-in-law, Diane, was a nurse in the Pacific Northwest. She lived in a very high cost of living city. 15 years ago, she bought herself a small apartment in a new development. It took about two years to build. In that time, the price of apartments in that building went up by about 30%. She didn't sell it because it was perfect for her. Unfortunately, she was diagnosed with breast cancer about two years after she took possession. She really didn't want to move back to Minnesota, so she asked her family for money to keep up with the mortgage. None of them had the money, and her mom really wanted her to move home. I was friends with her before I married her sister. Just friends, nothing more. She asked me for help. 
I bought the apartment off of her, I took over the mortgage, I didn't charge her rent, I paid all the taxes and condo levies. She got enough money from her insurance and a side hustle to live there. My wife knew we were helping her, but we didn't say anything because her mom was pissed that she didn't move home after her diagnosis. Diane passed away last month. She had a hard life for the last decade, but she was happy. When her mom got a copy of the will, she was furious. The apartment is worth a lot of money now. It's in a great building in a good neighborhood. She was expecting the apartment to sell and for there to be money to split up amongst all of her grandchildren. Diane never married and never had kids. Mother-in-law found out about the deal I made with Diane. My wife and I own the apartment outright. After we clear it out and get rid of all of her stuff, we're going to rent it out. The income it'll generate will pay for our retirement in a while. And when we sell it, our kids will have a nice nest egg to help them. But now my mother-in-law told everyone how we took advantage of her daughter in her time of need and stole her apartment. And how Diane would be upset if she knew that we were not sharing all the money from the apartment. It's really starting to bug my wife and she's saying that we should sell it and help out all the nephews and nieces. I showed her a spreadsheet of all of our costs for the apartment. If I subtract all of my costs and all of my lost opportunities for investment, when everything is done, the eight nieces and nephews might get $3,000 each. I said if she wanted, we could give them that much to get her family not to drop it. Her family says that it's BS and that we should sell the apartment and split it equally. I said I would be willing to do that in return for each of them paying one third of the money I invested over the last 10 years. They don't think that's fair. My wife's upset and her family's upset and I'm just trying to be fair to myself. I spent 10 years giving up other investments and toys for myself and helped out Diane instead. And now I'm getting crapped on. Full disclosure, I knew it was a good investment. It wasn't fully altruistic. I think OP's absolutely in the right here. They know the truth. They know they didn't steal this from Diane. They did it to help her out and, I mean, it was a good investment. It's just, she passed away and everybody thinks they have some kind of ownership over some kind of asset now and they're willingly poo-slinging around trying to get some kind of cash. Of course they're gonna say, oh it's not fair, you should just give us all that money and be done with it. Well yeah, that sure would be nice, wouldn't it? I'm sure that email I got from that Nigerian prince is gonna go through too, right? Our next story is, am I the jerk for telling my son that he needs to respect his mother? I have a son, 20 year old male, who's studying engineering in college, and as of recent, he's found the study material a little difficult and rightfully needs to work on. A few days ago, he came home from the dorm for the weekend to cool off a little bit. On Sunday, my wife came into my son's room, and I could tell he was a little agitated trying to work on something he didn't fully understand. My wife tried to console and reason with him, but he ended up raising his voice at her, telling her to leave him alone. Then my wife just told him to pack his bags and that he's going back to the dorm. He can't be here if he's going to act like this. My son tried to talk over her to shut her up, but my wife wasn't having any of it, telling him that she wouldn't relent until he either calms down or packs his stuff, and that she will not be held emotionally hostage by my son. And then he started calling her an overbearing witch and all sorts of other nasty names to which I had to bark at my son and tell him to stop right now and that he does not call my wife names or there will be problems if he doesn't de-escalate. She's just doing what she thinks is in his best interest. And he finally relented. Later that evening, my son made a comment about how he chatted with his friends who told them that my wife was in the wrong. But I had to say that they don't feed us, they don't pay our bills, they don't know us and that he needs to stop consulting his echo chambers and learn to forgive his mother and forget this, as he needs to respect her for getting him to where he is today and because she's his mother. He tried to tell me that respect is a two-way street, but I said by that logic, should his mom call him the nasty names that he does to her? Should we call up his grandma and tell her to cut his college funding? And that if he finds someone to be annoying and getting on his nerves, what should he do? Ignore it? To which he responded with, BS, control your darn wife, and I had to disengage. Since my son went back a couple nights ago, he's refused to answer our calls and only responds to our texts, asking us to apologize. No ifs, ands, or buts. 
but has told his grandma about us threatening to tell her to pull his funding, which she proceeded to give us an earful over and said that she'd pay for it no matter what, and called it really sad if we, his own parents, would be less proud of him than she is by even asking to do such a thing. I can't believe he went and told her about this, but now after what she said, I don't know how to feel about this. Sometimes I know I can be frustrated and agitated with something and the last thing I need is to have anyone, whether it's my mom or anybody, trying to like pat me on the back and calm me down. Like sometimes with something I need to just be agitated while I'm trying to work through it. I'm not saying like I'm slamming the desk and ripping stuff up, but I think you have a right to be a little frustrated while you're trying to figure this darn thing out and you just want a little space. He's basically crying out, leave me alone, and everybody's immediately responding, how dare you get aggressive? But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another crazy am I the jerk here story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.